In this episode, we'll make some custom footboards with my CNC. Hey folks, I'm Custom Chess, welcoming you to this new episode of Roma Custom Bike. Soon it will be my birthday, so I thought what better gift to myself if not a pair of new custom footboards. And from there I figured that maybe I'm not the only one that would appreciate this, so I went ahead and designed an entire line of them. <laughs> Made out of aluminum, copper or brass, powder coated wrinkled black, are sure to satisfy the most demanding bikers. As soon as I started developing the design and the production procedures, I realized that this process was way more complicated than I thought, so I've decided to document the whole thing in this video. The design stage started by using the good old paper and pencil technique. Once I was satisfied with the drafts, I scanned the drawings and redesigned them all, taking into consideration all the mechanical restrictions of the machining process. Once I was done, I had come up with five models I liked, and I decided to pick the first three to start with. The loop model, with the concentric circles, the straight model for those who already have this theme through the bike, and the flame model, because of course, without flames, it wouldn't be a line of custom accessories. <laughs> For my bike though, I've decided to go with the loop model, so let's start with that one. Prepping for a production line is quite different than from just making a one-off piece. You have to think repetition and scalability from the very first step of the design. So, with this type of mindset, I carved the seat right onto the bed of my CNC machine to allow me to use pre-cut pieces and leaving me only the job of carving the design. The water jet pre-cut piece, maybe we'll talk about that in another time, fits perfectly in the pocket. This is a fixed position the machine has to be aware of to know where to go and carve. The piece has to be held in place, so I start by carving the pockets for the holding screws. They'll serve the same purpose in the final product too. Once the part is secured to the base, I can start the carving cycle. Since I shot this footage, I've done a major upgrade to my CNC machine. But for the time being, let's watch it work as it was. One of the goals in prototyping a production line is optimizing the toolpath for high speed and quality finish. So I start with the pocket for the medallion that in my case will be made out of copper, just like all the rest of the accents on the bike. Once the pocket is done, I continue with the carving of the other design elements, like the concentric lines. To complete each line, I need to do multiple passes to reach the final depth. I hope that the upgrade that I just did to the machine will bring them down from 5 passages to 1 or at the most 2. Last design element is my signature feature, the dotted edge. After a good wash, the base for the footboard is ready to get powder coated. But before we continue, I'd like to ask you to show your support by subscribing to my channel and by sharing your videos on Facebook, Twitter and Google+, because that's how we support the show and keep the videos coming. You've been already great and we thank you, thank you very much, but let's keep it up. Let's get back to the medallions now. So, I decided to make the medallion with the same technique that I will be using in production using pre-cut medallions to insert straight into the machine. Well, 
I started to suspect that there was gonna be something wrong when the end mill got way too close to the holding screws while sculpting the letter O. But I crossed my finger and kept going. <laughs> Divine punishment is coming, and it's coming when the tool was on the letter S. The design wasn't properly centered, and the end mill hit the screw. The hand mill was broken, and we're back to the CAD to fix the problem. So, now I'm ready for round two. I also changed the position of the retaining screws, and we got our finger crossed. Excellent, the copper medallion came out great, but now I like to try the brass ones. I've never worked with this metal, so I have no idea if my machine will be able to handle it, nor what type of setting I should use regarding the feed and the depth of cut. <laughs> but we'll figure it out. <laughs> I start by cutting out the medallion shape from a sheet of brass, and already it looks like brass is a great material to carve. The medallion is secured onto the machine and we can start with the machining. I have to say the brass is the very best material that I've ever worked with so far. Copper and aluminum are quite soft and have the tendency to rip and clog up the tool. On brass the machine leaves a clean and very well defined cut. I like it. So I proceed to machine the other designs. Here you can see the flame model, a much more complex toolpath that will take twice the time as any of the other models and numerous tool changes using the 3, 4 and 6 millimeters end mills. <laughs> I've got to say the final product is worth it though. Here we have the rough parts and I think they already look awesome. But there is still quite a lot of work that needs to be done. In the second part of this episode I will apply powder coat paint and I will polish the brass and copper. I know very well that some of you can make these boards on their own, in which case please remember to share with me what you come up with. But for those of you that can't or just don't feel like going through the whole process, you can visit my site www.romacustombike.com and order a set for your very bike. Well, I'm Custom Chess for Roma Custom Bike and I'll see you very soon.